Hi everyone, welcome to August Books. I have five great books as always. I will put skip ahead times below in case you've read it or you're not interested. And it's raining here, we're having a monsoon. Hopefully the lighting isn't too weird and you don't hear the noise. So let's jump in. The first one is called Stealing. And it was a book about a young girl named Kit and she's a Cherokee Indian. It's set back in the 1950s. Her dad is widowed, her mom has died, and she lives with her dad on the farm. And being Indian, it very much captures, her dad's very quiet, doesn't feel a lot of need for filling the silence or the void. They spend a lot of contented time together in the evenings when he's home from work. She has a neighbor lady down the road that has just moved in. Kit goes fishing on a regular basis and when she is going to go fishing she sees this lady that has moved into this house and she is keeping an eye on the house and there's different cars that are there and she's not sure what all is going on and she ends up meeting this lady and they become friends. So Bella and Kit, the lady's name is Bella, um, Bella and Kit end up being friends and hanging out a fair bit. Kit will catch an extra catfish bring it back, clean it, they, you know, talk, they share. Kit feels comfortable enough with her that she's asking about these gentleman callers that come in the different cars, things like that. There is a nosy neighbor Christian lady who doesn't feel that it's right for Kit to be hanging out with Bella. I don't want to say too much more than that, but a lot of sad things unfold. The Christian people in town think that Kit would be better off being sent away to this Christian school versus being raised by her Cherokee relatives because they think that she would be better off. It's not true. It is so sad and so horrific what has gone on and this poor young girl, it's just tragic. I think this was extremely well done. I listened to the audio version. It captured the different characters, their voices very, very well. And it was told in a very quiet, factual manner. It wasn't a lot of emotion, but boy was it a difficult read and emotional. It was really, really good. Just a difficult subject matter. And a funny story is I follow Jenna on Instagram, Shoe Gal Jenna, and she recommended a book, and it was on a similar topic to this, not quite the same, but I read it, her review, said, that sounds great, I'm going to put this into my queue. I said, I grew up in Vancouver around a lot of Native American kids who had very bad experiences and were sent off to schools and things. And when I read this book, when it popped up in my queue, on my blog, I gave Jenna credit because I thought it was from her. And she writes and she goes, this one sounds really good. I'm going to have to read it. But the one that I read was Five Little Indians. I'm like, oh man, okay. So now the next one I want to read on this topic will be Five Little Indians. But this one was really good. It's not an easy read. It's not a light topic, but it was extremely well done. This next one is a lot lighter. It was called Just the Nicest Couple, and it's by Mary Kubica. I've read several of her books. They're kind of um, thriller, mystery kind of, more thriller. This is about two women, Nina and Lily, and they are both teachers and school teachers, and they have kind of become friends. Their husbands go out with them for dinners, you know, a couple dinners a couple of times. They're in different places in life. Nina, her husband's a doctor, they have a beautiful home, whereas Lily and her husband are struggling to, you know, just pay for their older place. It's beautiful and they love it, but it, they just live different lives. Nina's husband, Jake, goes missing, and Lily expresses her sympathy, says she's so sorry, oh, that's horrible, let me know. If you hear from him, Nina and Jake had a fight. And so that's why she thinks Jake has gone missing. She thinks that he is ghosting her, that he just won't talk to her because he's mad. But 
the hospital phones and says he hasn't shown up for work. And she's like, what? Like, the hospital is his life. Something's happened to him. And it unfolds with different people's perspective in little bits. You know, so you find out, you know, Nina's perspective or Jake's perspective. It's all different little pieces that help you fill in what has happened. And I love that. So I don't want to give too much away, but eventually Nina discovers that Lily may have been the last person to see Jake. And she never told Nina that she had seen Jake. She pretended like, your husband's missing? Oh my goodness. And so now there's a lot of suspicion over what has happened, what's transpired. And like I said, I found it really entertaining. It was an easy read and just the different perspectives. It was a lot of fun. I would definitely recommend that one. So the next book is The Drifter. And it's going to be really hard to capture because on one hand, it is gritty. It's about a Marine, Peter Ash, who served in Iran and Afghanistan. And he has gotten out of the uh, Marines and he's, you know, come back home. There's a lot in this book that is very real and gritty and gruesome. And then it also has a fun comical side. It has a romance. It has a light, easy read, kind of almost a popcorn kind of feel to it. It's a mixture of all different things. So it's not a heavy, gritty mystery novel, but it has that aspect. It was so enjoyable and so easy to read at the same time, if you don't mind swearing and grittiness. So after Peter has done his two tours of duty, he goes to get released, and part of that is you have to have a psychological evaluation. He goes to go in the building, and all of this white noise humming comes over him, and it gets stronger and stronger the closer he goes into the building turns around and goes out and he just like the sweat has broken out over him while he was in the building. He comes out and he's just like, and he feels so much relief. Well, it's almost, it's post-traumatic stress, but it's almost like he has claustrophobia. He can't be inside. The more he's inside, the worse his symptoms get. So he starts sleeping outside, he's sleeping under the stars. A couple years go by, he has not been part of civilization. Then he finds out a military buddy has committed suicide and he feels so bad because he should have gone to see this fellow. They were very close in the Marines and so he goes there to help out his wife and she has two boys and he tells the wife that it's part of the Marine program where he gets paid and he can do work for her, which is a lie. He just wants to help her out and he knows she's too proud and won't take the money otherwise. So he starts working on her back porch, which is this dilapidated, falling down thing. And he gets to know the two boys. And while he's working on this porch, underneath there is the biggest, most fierce dog ever. And a Samsonite suitcase that is full of money. So it leads into a mystery where he's trying to figure out where did this money come from? The dog is its own character in itself, which is really funny, it's really cute, and it just unfolds with understanding a lot of what vets go through in trying to reassimilate into how it's okay one minute to be killing somebody in the name of their military service, and then they're released and they're supposed to be normal, you know, and I think the author did a lot of research on this and wanted that to be a big part of the story. And it was, and it was really well done. And then there's the mystery, there's the boys, there's the widow, there's Peter, there's the dog. It just was a lot of fun. And there's the mystery, like I said, of the money. Where did all this money come from? What happened to everything? And there's all these different pieces that tie into it. And you get to know Peter a lot, and I really liked him. He was a, a good guy. And it just, I don't know, it captures so much. And it was such an easy read, and it was like popcorn. 
So the next one was the second book in the series, because like I said, it was like popcorn. It was so good, and it's called Burning Bright. So Peter continues trying to avoid being in buildings. He's camping out, and he decides to go to the Redwoods. And he is out in the trees and in the fog and the mist and everything, and a grizzly bear comes along, and he takes off up a tree. And he is treed up there, I think it was all night long, and he's like, what is going on? And he figures out, because the bear is still down, how he can kind of trapeze over these trees to get to a big tree where he can climb up, like a, a one that will support his weight. And as he's climbing up, there is a rope that is coming down, and he's like, what the heck? This is out in the middle of nowhere, and he's looking up, and there's so much fog, he can't tell. So he goes up, and up, and up, and there is a woman, June, that he ends up meeting, who's up there. And it explains it in kind of a plausible way. There's some that you have to suspend, maybe because I'm not that athletic or adventuresome, but for me to understand June, it's a little out of my scope, but they go. he goes up there, he meets her, and as they're talking, there's some shots, and they kind of tell each other their background, and these men are after her, and they figure out they probably just shot the grizzly bear. So Peter goes down, takes a look from up in the treetops, sure enough, they've shot the bear, and he hears them, and trying to figure out who they are and what they're doing. They claim that they are with a government agency, but it doesn't appear that that is true. So Peter goes back up, June and Peter take off through the trees, finally get down to her car, and this big mystery unfolds and they are on the run. I don't want to say too much about where this leads. This book is not as much about Peter being an ex-vet and his symptoms. It's more about this mystery. And what I enjoyed with so much AI being in the world was June's mother had just been killed in a car accident and she has written a program that is AI, and it's learning all the time and getting smarter and smarter. And June now has this program, and they figure that is what these men want. And it unfolds from there, and it captures a lot of AI, how it can be used for good or for evil, all of the different people that are in this, some with nefarious desires and some are good and some are sketchy, you don't quite know. It was really, really good. It's light, it's easy. You can't get too concerned about, oh yeah, as if that wouldn't be plausible. You just have to go with it, and it is a lot of fun. I really enjoy Peter Ash's character, and I will definitely be reading more. Like I said, these are gritty, these are not wholesome. There's some minor sex scenes, there's swearing, there's killing, but they're fun. They're light at the same time. I know that sounds like an oxymoron, but they aren't heavy. They're very easy, and it's just when you're looking for a light read, this would be a really good book to read. And I'm definitely looking forward to the third book in this series. And then the final one that I have to recommend is, I have to put the name on the screen, on my Sunday chat, I was talking about apps that I like, and thank you so much. She recommended on version now on the Bible app. I have the version Bible app. I have enabled the audio so I can have it play out loud to me while I'm getting ready in the morning, when I'm in my car, I can listen to the Bible. And just so you know, you can also adjust the speed, you can adjust the voice, you know, so you can have it as a different um, narrator. I really, really love Uversion. It's really good. 
and she told me about a plan that they have and you simply enable it. You can pick all different types of plans in, version, in the Uversion app. So when you're in Uversion and you go to plans, you can enable the Bible recap and then you can pick what you want. You can do just the Old Testament, just the New Testament, both. I love it. It has a devotional every day and you can either read it or listen to it. Go to the first one and then I hit play and I can listen to it. And when I'm getting ready in the morning, I put in my earbud and I could listen to it while I'm doing my makeup and my hair. In the car, it plays over my Bluetooth. I listen to it around the house. I love it. It is a great way to listen to your Bible and when you start at the New Testament, it will skip around to the different chapters and verses that are in for that day. So in the beginning, it goes like from Matthew to Luke or to John. It'll have how each of the Gospels have the same story from a different perspective. Well, you will listen to each of those and it automatically goes to the next one. So you could go from Matthew to Luke and then to something else. Now I'm now in Ephesians, but I love how it flips around. You listen to the same version of, say, Lazarus being raised from the dead. You pick up little nuances of all the differences, and it's just really enjoyable, and it's an easy way to read, rather than just starting at, uh, you know, the beginning of Genesis or the beginning of the Old Testament or New Testament, and then playing all the way through, it plays in a sense of what is makes sense for this um, telling of the story. And I just really have been enjoying that. So thank you so much for that. So like I said, you can either read it through or you can have it play audio. And I've just really, really been enjoying that. It is a nice, easy addition for me. I do the audio, so it's an easy addition to my daily Bible reading and devotional that I do. And then I can listen to this while I'm doing my makeup or in the car. And with me going into work more often, it is wonderful to be able to listen to this and pull it up. So thank you so much, Sal, for recommending that. I think that's how you say your name, hopefully, but I truly appreciate it. Always love your recommendations, and if you have any good books for me, whether they're devotional, apps, or just fiction books, let me know, and thank you so much for spending some of your time with me. I Hopefully, maybe you found a book that you might be interested in, and I hope you're having an amazing day. We'll talk to you next time. You go down. 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 Itty bitty. You get... You're going to be seen on camera. Oh, maybe not. Okay, you can stay. So the next, is that your nose? People are going to see your nose. <laughs> They're going to wonder, what's that puppy's nose doing in the picture? That's my baby. Oh, you're too funny.